From an action figure point of view, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is like 60% Iron Man, and the remaining 40% is a mixture of Avengers, S.H.I.E.L.D. agents, Spider-Man, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Doctor Strange. Hundreds, maybe even thousands of figures, one of them has to be the best. And that one would make for a fine video, but hold on to your small plastic food accessories, because we're going to throw in nine more on top of that. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the 10 best Marvel Cinematic Universe Marvel Legends figures. Number 10, 2017 Vulture Wave Homemade Suit Spider-Man. This figure is brand new for me as of the making of this video. I literally bought it three days ago, so it's still fresh and interesting. Not like that dirty old First Avenger Captain America that's been in the bottom of my Captain America drawer. When it comes to lists, I usually purposely deduct points from brand new stuff because new stuff always feels like it's the best stuff. And that's not always the case. Many times it's just good and new. But this Spider-Man is different. He's new and really interesting, and I haven't even seen the movie, so I'm basing this purely on the figure out of context. Clean, crisp details, fantastic articulation. It's the definition of a character from the comics brought into our world with a suit that I literally could make out of the stuff in my home right now. Number nine is 2016 Dormammu Wave Doctor Strange. One of the challenges of a cinematic universe inspired figure is that you have a very small margin of error when it comes to getting a likeness correct. Not so difficult if that character is wearing a mask or helmet or happens to be a talking tree, but if it's an actor like Benadryl Stash, you've got to up your game. Fans of Star Trek Into Darkness are historically difficult to please with a keen eye for detail. Clamberpatch has a face that dozens of people are going to know immediately if it isn't right, and Hasbro knew that, taking particular care to get his brow, the bridge of his nose, and tiny mustache just right. Number 8 is 2014 Groot Wave Groot. Almost a throwback to the old Toy Biz days of Marvel Legends, he's really tall, not Sentinel Build-A-Figure tall or Galactus or Giant Man, but he's as tall as he's supposed to be as a character. His height is the reason Build-A-Figures used to be so cherished by fans, they were something that transcended a single-packed figure. If Hasbro had applied any paint to it, he could have been one of the seven best Marvel Cinematic Universe figures ever. Technically, this spot is for both the 2014 Build-A-Figure version and the single-pack 2017 Toys R Us exclusive figure. The Build-A-Figure has the better head, the Toys R Us version has all the other stuff, and you don't have to spend a hundred bucks to put them together. Number seven is 2017 Titus Wave Star-Lord. Second attempt for Hasbro to do a Chris Pratt likeness was easily 10 to 15 parsecs improvement over their 2014 attempt, known in my house as, that's not Chris Pratt, that's not anyone. Better sculpt, more detail, short coat instead of posability limiting long coat, more paint apps, and while the likeness still isn't quite Chris Pratt, it at least looks like he's related to him. Number six is 2017 Titus Wave Yondu. Characters that come with multiple heads are the way of the future. The sooner Hasbro can be convinced of this, the better for all of us. And not just two heads in this case, two excellent Michael Rooker heads after he blew himself. One is a smiling fin down head, and the other is the fin-activated weaponized whistling Yondu. On top of that, Hasbro included an arrow accessory with an energy stream trail behind it that fits into Yondu's arrow holster, giving it some sense of movement and life. It's an incredible detail that succeeds where the throwing shield effect from Secret War Captain America fails. Number five is 2016 Walmart exclusive Civil War 3-pack Iron Man Mark 46. 60% of the Marvel Legends figures that have been produced are Iron Man figures. Think about that for a minute. Think about how many figures that is and what that says about the character's popularity. Think about what it took for me to ballpark that stat so that it seems significant enough to make my point about how many Iron Man figures the average collection has, even if I don't really care that much about Iron Man enough to need more than one or two. Hasbro figured out Iron Man pretty early on and has basically just been making tweaks to the formula from version to version as the movies come out. This one was a redeco of a figure released in the regular Civil War wave. The differences from the single carded version, carded they're boxed, are is what make it superior to most Iron Man figures that have been made. Unhelmeted Tony Stark head, two different sets of energy effects, and most importantly, the battle damaged paint. The matte finish of the black adds a degree of realism that has been missing from just about, if not every single Legends figure, and certainly the movie inspired pieces. Number four is 2010 Walmart exclusive Iron Man 2 War Machine and 2016 Target exclusive Civil War 2 pack War Machine. Both figures are here basically because they're basically the same figure separated by six years and three suit models. It's fine. Basically. <laughs> 
Both figures are brilliant examples of detailed sculpting, mixed finished paint apps, and multiple accessories coming together to deliver fully satisfying versions of that character. Multiple handsets, removable, repositionable weapons, and despite the somewhat limited posability, they are the clunky, heavy, robotic war machine that sets that suit apart from the more streamlined, hot rod appearance of Iron Man. As written. <laughs> Number three is 2016 Giant Man Wave Black Panther. There's not much to Black Panther. No cape, no shield, no jet boots, just kitty cat ears and claws. But the team at Marvel designed a guy, a guy. But the team at Marvel designed a suit that looks more than just, okay. this is what happens when it's hot when we're shooting. But the team at Marvel designed a suit that looks more like, okay. but the team at Marvel designed a suit that looks like more than just a guy in full black body spandex. <laughs> Full body black standards. Okay, from the top. But the team at Marvel designed a suit that looks more than just. <laughs> but the team at Marvel designed a suit that looks like more than just a guy in full-body black spandex. There's a lot of detail in the suit hinting at the additional functionality, the advanced technology that it takes to manufacture it, and those details are all included in the sculpting of this figure. The paint application on some of the incredibly small silver lines sets a bar that makes a fan shake their head and wonder why so many eyes come out so wrong. And unlike the more expensive SH Figuarts import figure, this Black Panther also comes with an unmasked T'Challa head. Number two is 2015 Toys R Us exclusive Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. 3-pack Agent Coulson. In a line full of superheroes, mutants, techno armor, gods, Groot, and Rocket Raccoon, there are very few normal humans wearing normal clothing looking totally, boringly, real-life normal. Even Agent Hill, Hawkeye, and Black Widow are all wearing tactical suits. The closest other normal-looking figures are Scarlet Witch and Bruce Banner, but they both have powers Coulson is just a guy. You can't get any less exciting than normal guy in suit and tie. That's his thing. That's his role. That was his role. But hey... Even for a normal guy in a suit, this figure comes with two heads with excellent likenesses and a giant gun that, if given the chance, just might have ended the first Avengers movie about an hour earlier. We'll never know. Number one is 2017 Vulture Wave Vulture. The core figure, even without the wings, is itself a really great piece. And I know I use the word transcendent on this show a lot, but I just don't know any other way to describe it. There are figures that have appeal beyond the context of who the characters are and their narrative situations. Yes, I know. This is Vulture from the Spider-Man movie. It's Michael Keaton under that helmet, and there are specific reasons he decided to make giant bird wings and bird feet. But as an action figure, he's a guy in an evil-looking fighter pilot helmet. He's wearing a flight jacket with a harness, all with finely sculpted and painted details. He does have mechanical bird legs. Why? Because it looks cool. He looks like Green Lantern gone evil after a battle that took more than his legs from him. It stole his soul. And then, I mean, throw the wings on there and it's an achievement, a very expensive achievement by Hasbro to make those wings happen. They could have made them smaller, like the Falcon's wings. They could have folded them up and squeezed them into the box like Archangels. They could have skipped Vulture altogether, but here he is and he's a good piece to make you stop and think about what else we can expect from this line in the future. Those are the 10 best Marvel Cinematic Universe Legends figures from talking trees to perfectly normal looking people. This line has it all except for a passable likeness of Chris Evans. Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Share this video. Help us grow by clicking the link to our Patreon account, which is either on screen right now or definitely in the description below. And let us know in the comments below who your 10 best MCU figures are. It's not as easy as you think. Your own personal biases sneak through, and next thing you know, you have two war machines ranked ahead of Yondu. That's the upside-down world. Cut.